as you saw, we are actually building a flow. We will connect, perform some transformations, and then we will write it somewhere. Now, when you click the plus, you see I can add uh, a few different nodes to my flow. The most straightforward one and the one which you will use most of the time is literally the cleaning step. Let me click that. And as you can see, Tableau adds one step to it. Now, what is all of this? When you're working in Tableau, the, the good part is that you always still see your data, how it will look in your end result. But we need to focus on the difference between the view we see here at the top and the view we see here at the bottom. In this view here, you actually get a summary of your data. What does that mean? For example, I have customer IDs. I will get all the distinct values of all the customer IDs in my little table. The same for product. I can here see in a glimpse that in the table I have loaded, although it has 33 rows, that it mainly, no, not mainly, it only has rows for product A, B, C, and D. It not only gives away that these are the distinct values for the product, it also shows me how many rows of that product I have. So here I can nicely see product A has got nine rows, product B has eight rows, product C has eight rows, and product D has seven rows. For price, we see that we have rows with 10, 20, 30, etc. But now I'm also clicking the value. And that's the cool stuff about it. Because what Tableau on top of showing the distinct value shows are actually the frequency of which the values appear in your data set. So here you see the little bars. It's actually a mini graph. So A has the highest and the longest bar because it has the most rows. You could do the same thing for price. So let me sort it. So here we see that we have 13 rows with the price of 10, six rows with the price of 100, et cetera, et cetera. And that's not everything. On top of that, the block can also show how the values are linked with each other. Imagine that I want to quickly see which were the customers who had bought a product B. I can click on the value and then he shows me the corresponding rows. Do notice that customer two, six, and 10 get highlighted. That means, as we can see in the preview at the bottom, that these customers have bought product B in the little file. We can do it the other way around. I can select Bell here. I see the rows for Bell. We will talk about the fact that the country values here are a little bit different, and we will look into how we can solve that. But first of all, what else is there to do in the top screen? Well, as with most of the screens, you can rename whenever you want. So if you say customer ID should be customer underscore ID, that's all possible. Sorry, I undid. Let me go back. I, you can change the product name, the price, etc. You can even change the values in your rows. So if I would decide to call this product A, call this product B, call this product D, call this product C. As you can see, Tableau in real time adapts the values. And again, if you want to change the data formatting, it's all possible here as well. Then, um, Tableau is, is uh, made for cleaning. So what we see here is that the values look slightly different. As with all systems uh, with user inputs, it might be that some countries have been uh, typed in wrongly. So what we can do here is actually try to group them. We can do that by clicking on the three dots 
in the column. And as we will see later, we can manually sort of uh, combine them, do it based on the pronunciation, on the common characters, or even on the spelling. But more about that later on. Also, you can drag around your columns uh, however you want to also see that it changes in the preview below. So if I say, um, I want to have the product in the beginning, just drag it there. Same thing here. You can drag around the columns just to have them the way that you want. All right, what else is there? Um, we can create calculated fields because of course we are not stuck with the data which are in uh, our little table. We can create a new one. For example, this export, as you can see at the top left, is from 2019 uh, from the 11th month. So what you could do, this is an okay way, but I will show you in a bit the better way, is to create a calculated field. Let's for now call it year month. And I can hard code it this time. I'll show you in a bit how to do it in a more lean way. I click save. And as you can see, all my rows have nicely gotten the value. Imagine that you want to apply uh, some kind of reduction on the prices. You can create a field price. Let me call it price transformed. I can do price times 0 0.95, for example, dot 95. Like this, and I add it. So as you can nicely see, when I put it next to each other, the price has been multiplied by 0.95. Now, as you can see, you quickly do a lot of transformations. Um, and you might wonder like, hmm, I did this transformation, but I want to undo it. Do I do Control Z and go all the way back? Well, you could do that, but you will lose changes you want to keep. So here in the left pane, you get an overview of all the changes you have done to your data. Let me click it. So what have we done? We have grouped and replaced the product names. So he nicely says it here, group and replace for product for uh, values replaced. Then we calculated the year month. So here you see that you created this constant string being the year and the month number. And we made a column called price transform where we multiplied the price with uh, 0 0.95. If you feel like, hmm, okay, the product renaming didn't make that much, much sense, you can or edit it or just simply remove it. And there it is again, I have undone my transformation. Okay, small recap. At the top, you have a summary of your data. It is interactive. By clicking, you get a preview of the data for your specific selection. At the bottom, you get your preview, renaming, sorting, all possible. But of course, before we start building a bigger flow, you will be sharing your files probably, you will be working together with other people. And then it's important that you document very well what you are doing. So before we start uh, continue, it now has this meaningless Dutch uh, tab one. But what you can say is that this note represents the export of 2019-11. And even on top of that, we can add description. This file comes from in case you want to provide your note with a comment. Also, you can play with the colors. You can think about ways how you would use it. But imagine that they say, okay, the connection is good. I'm going to green. I'm working on this still. So I'm going to make it the orange color. To also notice that all the steps have a name. So for example, here at the top left, you see it's called clean one. If you want to give that another name, you can click on it and say, call it my cleaning step. As I said, 
in every cleaning step, you can track your changes. But if you want to be very explicit about it, you could even say uh, create date field and price calculation, for example. You can give up to 200 symbols for the comment. Let me minimize that. Also, do notice that you're relatively free to organize your flow. You can put it 